Hey there, friends. Welcome back. It's Tiger Arcade, and today we're going to be doing something different that I've never done before. I want to dive into some news that's come out that's, I think, causing a lot of controversy. It's also getting everyone really excited. Um, I, for one, am pretty stoked about it. We're going to take a closer look at this announcement by Behringer. Present. Behringer. I'm going to say Behringer. So they've announced three different kinds of synthesizers. Well, they've actually announced more, but I'm going to be going over three that are these mini synths. And I think it's got a lot of people excited for multiple reasons and angry. And we'll go over that in just a little bit. But it's got people excited because of the price point and the amount of features packed into such a small synthesizer. So they've announced three mini synthesizers. They announced uh, one that's called the JP4000. They announced the Pro VS Soul. And they also announced the Saturn Soul. So I want to say also that first one I mentioned, JP4000, that's followed by the name spirit so they got souls and spirits spooky i for one like i said before i'm excited about this because it's it's allowing access to synthesizers to a community of people who might not have a lot of money but it, again it gives them access to hardware synthesizers we all know that software synthesizers are probably the most accessible uh, and ch uh, cheapest way to access um, a myriad of synthesizers without, you know, breaking the bank. And so this is awesome. Behringer has always kind of been the underdog in creating, cloning, um, just making synthesizers more accessible to the general public. Now, I, what I kind of wanted to do is take a quick deep dive into each one of those synthesizers. Um, <laughs> my voice. Uh, take a deep dive into each one of those synthesizers, and then we can examine that, because basically what they've been saying is these synthesizers aren't going to be available yet until this shortage uh, eases up a little bit, which I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it might just be until they get more access to this shortage of chips. Um, so they've already gone into production. Uh, they just can't finish them, in other words. But there's rumor that these synthesizers are going to be available, available sometime around summer. I've had a pretty good laugh looking at what people are saying about these online. You know, you get all the synth snobs uh, on there. I, you see them all over Reddit, Facebook, um, sometimes on Instagram. I feel like it's mainly Facebook and Reddit. I follow a lot of groups or I, I'm part of a lot of um, communities, and so it's it's pretty hilarious to just even be there for the comments the biggest thing that people are saying is that these are comparable to volcas my first thought when i saw them was micro freak and i've also seen some people saying that it reminds them of a micro freak as well volcas i think because of their compact size they might even be around the same size uh, i don't know the dimensions yet on these but this is what some of the people are saying about these. Let's go through these together. It's pretty funny. This first one is, is that a, just a Korg Volca on steroids? Is it an even cheaper Volca? It looks just like a Volca without being boxy. Behringer Volcas. So here's where it gets, here's where it gets pretty funny. Uh, this guy's like, these are so butt-ass ugly, no desire at all to own one. However, for the price, I know a lot of people will be perfectly happy to pick one up. So for your congrats on that good news. Terrible! This is extremely ugly! It's like, okay, move on, don't get it then. I, for one, and know a ton of other people that are looking forward to these... <laughs> But everyone's always judging a book by its cover, so 
he, here's here's someone I didn't fully understand what he was saying, but he says, except one of them has the sound. I won't buy any of those. Here, here's a, a perfect example of a synth snob. So, no more professional tools, just some desk clutter. Someone else says, Korg and Buchla also puts our accordion synths, then. Someone else, coming next from Behringer, electronic MIDI bagpipes and modular banjos. Anyways, a lot of people are are bashing hard on how these synths are. Behringer takes so much crap from people but they still just keep putting out stuff it's hilarious because they don't care they they're listening to the positives more than the negatives um and like i have already said they're they're making things more accessible to people so someone else said sorry but are they crapping every good synth tired of reading these posts here's another one Honestly, some of the worst design I've ever seen, and I'm trying to be nice. VS with only four voices is criminal. Really? Small toys and so ugly. Sorry. And that keyboard? OMG. So as you can see, a lot of people are going to talk crap, and sometimes it's funny just to be there for the comments. You know, you always get to hear from the synth snobs who have this perfect perception of how you know synths should be or should be recreated or designed or utilized and it's yeah like i said it's it's pretty funny and you just kind of got to rub them off and take what they're saying with a grain of salt because in the, at the end of the day the most important thing is just that you're having fun you know all right so now what i want to do is deep dive into every single one of these let's let's start off with the cheapest one so they announced the jp4000 basically it says that uh it's a four voice hybrid paraphonic synthesizer uh, because it pairs with a four voice virtual analog engine with a single analog filter. The JP4000 is a Roland JP8000 sound engine emulation, and it's only going for roughly 50 US dollars. That's an estimate. We don't know if that's the final price, but that's pretty cheap. Um, let's see if, if it is worth that price. So uh, how it describes it is it's similar in size to the Korg Monotron, uh, but don't let the small size fool you. It's a full-blown synthesizer and a micro package. It features a programmable four-voice hybrid synthesizer with two analog modeling oscillators per voice, an analog filter, a reproduction of the JP8K sound engine with super saw waveform, additional two operator FM engine, authentic 12-bit DAC for classic sound, 32 memory presets expandable via Synth Tribe app. Uh, that's awesome. Um, and uh, looking at it itself, you know, you can see that there's a USB. So that's huge because if there's bugs or something or updates they want to add to it, they can. And it looks like they've already considered uh, being able to expand it or change it up more via that USB. Uh, 16 touch sensitive keys for great playability. I don't know how I feel about that keyboard yet because I've never personally owned a Volca I've never owned um, a Micro Freak. I've heard people complain about those keyboards. Uh, this one in particular, though, you can it doesn't look like it has MIDI uh, in, so you cannot use it with another keyboard as far as I'm aware. Um, so you're kind of stuck to that. So for that price point, I think uh, a lot of people are already going to be out. Um, so let's keep reading. It says... There's an arpeggiator with three patterns and hold function, individual envelopes for filter and amplifier for creative sound shaping, two powerful LFOs to control filter and oscillator tuning, 
six function buttons and bright o OLED display. USB micro connector allows powering via smartphone, power bank, or computer. Okay, so yeah, that tells me that there's it's not going to have a uh, battery. Um, if you're going to be able to just, if it's saying you could power it via power bank, your computer or smartphone, that's an immediate giveaway. Uh, it says USB MIDI implementation, um, including all parameters and bulk load save. So they anticipate this to ship in June. That's what this says. Retail price of $50. If we take a look at it again, I, this is See, this is the one I'm probably least excited about because it looks like it's more of a standalone. I don't see the ability to kind of use it with a Euro or Euro rack, uh, semi-modular. You know, I don't see in outs anywhere. Um, no sync. You know what I mean? I see a spot for your headphones, your volume, power on, power off. Looks like you can change the different waveforms. It's cool, you know, that it's paraphonic and that it has... You know, kind of, I'm sure it's going to have a big sound. Um, you can change. It looks like it has the filter settings, and it's going to have the ability to have presets. I'm not sure if I mentioned or not if it said that it has the ability to save, load and save. Okay, yeah, it does actually. So the ARP might be kind of fun, but yeah, this is kind of like maybe standalone. You're traveling. You just want to mess around. I mean, the sound out for the headphones, you could then plug that into like, uh, you know, some effects and then route it to your computer or whatever your, you know, your mixer. So you could do that with it to try to expand the sound a bit. So that's that one. So the next one is the Behringer Saturn Soul. So it looks like there's going to be... You know, there's, they've already mentioned two souls. So I'm wondering if they're going to keep this up, you know. Are they going to then expand to, like, drums, drum machines, expanding, you know, between, like, like the Volcas? Are they going to do a sampler, you know what I mean? So this is really interesting. Let's, let's read about the Saturn soul. It says that it's a paraphonic monosynth. So this is another paraphonic one, uh, just like that first one that we had mentioned. And... It is based on the classic Jupiter synthesizer from the 80s. It has basically a single voice with individually controllable oscillators. Um, they're working on a full-size copy of, of the Jupiter 8, but this is designed to be an inexpensive mini synth to take on. So that's cool for people that complain about... This is too small. Why don't they just make a bigger one? So... I'm excited about this one and, and the next one that I'm going to be mentioning because I like how on first glance it's expandable. You can use it with your other gear and that and that for me is really exciting. I noticed that this one, however, though, doesn't have a little built-in screen. Let's keep let's read about the features. It says analog synthesizer based on the classic Jupiter synthesizer from the 80s. 27 touch sensitive keys, analog signal path, three VCOs with four selectable saw, triangle, square, and pulse waveforms, pulse width modulation, multi-mode filter with resonance, filter switchable between two and four poles for additional sound options, play modes include poly unison and arpeggiator, 16 step motion sequencer with eight memory slots and recording of knob movements. LFO with saw, triangle, square, and random waves for vibrato, tremolo, and wah-wah effects. Voltage controller amplifier with a dedicated ADSR envelope. Micro USB connector allowing powering via smartphone, power bank, or computer. So they said that again. So again, that tells me that these are not capable of you know putting batteries inside of them. You'll have to have a separate type of power bank to power these. Sync input and output to synchronize with other synthesizers or drum machines. Comprehensive MIDI implementation, including NRPN CC control of all parameters and bulk load save. The release date for the Saturn Soul is to be determined based on getting required chips. The retail price is $99. So this one looks awesome. I love that 
I actually like how compact it is. It'll fit nicely, you know, if you have already a lot of gear, um, you know, you'll have space on your desk for something else. Uh, if you don't have a lot of gear, it's it's great for people who like minimalistic approaches to music. It's great for traveling. You know, they said that you can use it with a power bank. I like that it's expandable to use it with your other your other gear that you might have. The in and out is going to be huge. The thing that's kind of weird, though, so it said 16-step sequencer. It has an arpeggiator. But if you notice, the keys go from F to G. But, I mean, they are limited, I'm sure, to just the 16 for the 16 steps because it has the light-ups, just like the Volcas. Um, and then it looks like there's, like, a deeper menu uh, when you look at how they have, like, names on all of the keys. The MIDI in, though, is going to be awesome. You know, just use your own keyboard. You're not limited, or if you have sausage fingers or something or you don't like the touch of the feel of these keys you can just use your own keyboard i think it's awesome how it's set up it's in a compact small setting i like the ability that you can record erase um you know play with the sequencer here it gives you all the basics of any standard synthesizer lfo you know uh, VCO, VCF envelope. So this one's going to be really awesome. And when this one becomes available, I'm probably going to get this one, as I'm sure a lot of other people. Now, this last one that I've saved, this one is one that I'm looking forward to the most. Jeez, it's hard, it's hard to, you know, say if this one's better or not. We haven't even heard how any of these sound. They haven't demoed any of these for us. But I'm sure that they'll release videos demoing these products soon for all of us to hear. But this one's awesome. I like the little screen. I know that some people freak out when they see these tiny screens. Like, like why even at these screens? I can't read them. Or, why are the graphics so bad on these little screens? I mean, again, we have to consider the price point, though, and what we're getting out of this. So let's read about the Pro VS Soul. It said it's inspired by the classic Sequential Profit VS. It's a synthesizer that I'm not familiar with that it's based on, but it says the VS stands for Vector Synthesizer. And if you notice, it has a little joystick on it, so... I think with that you can, you know, change up the waveforms. So it says the the Behringer Pro VS Soul is a is less of a direct copy than many of the of their previous synths. Instead, using classic vector synthesis as the sound engine for a mini synth, with the form factor that's closer to Korg Volca series than most other mini synths. So let's go into this one. It says here's what they have to say about the uh, Pro VS Soul. Pro VS Polyphonic Four Voice hybrid vector synthesizer with presets and full MIDI implementation modeled after the Profit VS from 1986, but with many extra functions. This little monster has 127 wave tables, 32 presets plus a sequencer, arpeggiator, and display with oscilloscope. That's awesome. So it's going to it's going to show the waveforms on there and display some information. That's awesome that it has presets. When we take a look at it, it looks like you can also save, record, and I'm sure that this one also plugs in, you know, to power banks, your computer for changing up presets or whatever have you, updates. So to kind of finish off with this one, it says development is completed and once we receive chips it'll go straight into production estimated price $99 uh, they still haven't announced when it's going to be available but I'm thinking sometime in summer uh, based on what they already said about that f the first one the JP 4000 they said sometime around June so that could mean possibly after that so anticipate some time in summer if this chip crisis eases up um, taking a look at the Pro VS Soul, though, this thing looks pretty incredible. It's got a lot of features packed into a small space, you know, and it looks like it even has effects. I see chorus. 
It looks like it has an analog filter with cutoff and, and resonance. Um, the envelope, you know, you got your classic ADSR, so they really let you tweak the parameters here, which I love to be able to do that. And it's awesome that they included knobs for each of those. You know, they could have just included one, one knob and then you press a button and you keep switching through the menu until you can uh, find the right parameter you want to adjust. I like that each one has its own. Some might freak out about the size of these knobs, but some of us don't care. So this, this one is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most because of how unique it is. I'm definitely interested in the Saturn and in this Pro VS. I'm looking forward to what Behringer has got coming up next because you know they've already announced other uh, synthesizers um, semi-modulars like the Proton I might be missing something else but looks like they got some more stuff coming I'm looking forward to this smaller compact lineup anyways I appreciate you guys sticking through it uh, to the end if you like this leave a like subscribe and we'll see you next time